Okay, let's uh, do these notes. It's on adding and multiplying and the difference, especially with uh, radicals, square roots. But let's just go back and look at it with fractions first. So multiplying, for, here's just some quick examples. 3 fourths times um, 2 thirds. They don't need to be like denominator, just multiply across. Okay, you guys probably know that that's going to come up to be 6 over 12, and then which is just a half. So, the point is, they don't have to be like, uh, they don't have to be like denominators in order to multiply. With adding, remember, they do have to be like denominators. Oops. So, let's say 3 fourths. Uh, times two-thirds, we need to get a common denominator, be 12, so multiply by 3, multiply by 4, get a common denominator 12, so what do we got, 9 over 12, Yeah, sorry about the sloppiness. Uh, oh, shoot, this is supposed to be plus. Sorry, can you fix that? Plus, 9 over 12 plus, because we're adding. Um, 8 over 12. So we're talking 17 over 12. Okay, so point is, don't have to, or you do have to have, for adding, you need, a, you need them to be like. Which is review. Okay, uh, remember with variable expressions, multiplying, they don't need to be alike. In other words, um, 5x squared um, times 2xy. Okay, they're not they're not really like. They have different variables. So, but you can still multiply them. So 10 and x to the third and y. Okay, but remember with adding, they uh, they actually have to be alike. So, you know, if you had 5x squared e plus 2x. minus 3x squared, you can't put those all together. You can only put it together your like terms, which are the x squareds. So you'd wind up with putting those together, 2x squared plus 2x. That's actually subtracting, but same as adding. Okay, so just trying to make the connection here to to what you can do with radicals. So this is the new stuff right here, or with square roots. So multiplying, you can multiply any radicals together. 3 square root of 8 uh, times um, say negative 2 square root of 3 Okay, we can multiply together the whole number part, so you can do the 3 times negative 2. And then you can also multiply together the radical parts, so square root of 24. And then simplify your radical there, so negative 6. Um, let's see, we'll break that into square root of 4 and square root of 6. So negative 6 times 2 times square root of 6 is negative 12 square root of 6. Okay, the point is you can multiply radicals together. They don't really have to be like, they don't have to be like radicals. You know, we have different radicals here, different numbers under the square roots. For adding, different story, or same as above, but they got to be like in order to add. So. Let's do 3 square root of 8, 
and this would be minus, but you know, same as adding, minus five square root of 18. Okay, these are not, they don't look alike. The radical parts don't look alike, so can we combine them? Well, not right now, but if we simplify the radicals, hopefully we can see that they might be alike. Okay, and 18, perfect square factor is 9, so break that into square root of 9, square root of 2. Okay, so we got 3 times 2, square root of 2, or 6 square root of 2. Mm, over there. Okay, and then minus, what's this, 5 times 3, square root of 2, which is 15 square root of 2. So now you can see they're like, they have the same radical, so they're kind of like, kind of just like up here, you know, when these both had the same, same variable, x squared on them, it's kind of similar. These both have a square root of 2, so we can combine them and get what well, 6 minus 15 is <clears throat> negative 9 square root of 2. Okay, so hopefully you see how that can, is similar to these ones up above there. Okay, you'll have to do some distributing and foiling on your homework too, but if you get those basic concepts there, you, should, you guys should be okay. Apologize for sloppiness. Have a good day, guys.